Ben McCain, Butch McCain's weather, Myron Patton Sports. This is Five Alive News at Noon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Five Alive News at Noon. We're the McCain Brothers. Make sure your bows and ribbons are taped down good. It's a windy one out. I'll have details on that in just a minute, so don't blow away. Thank you, Butch. Topping the news, hard work and a little luck kept some Oklahoma City homes and businesses from going up in smoke. Five Alive's Terry Watkins is live in South Oklahoma City with details. Terry? Well, Ben, it's that wind that Butch was talking about that created all the problems down here. We've got about a half a mile of grassland going into the buildings that you see behind me that are completely scorched. Fire officials are not sure exactly what started it. Some type of a spark in and around some uh, oil well containing tanks, but they don't believe it was the batteries inside the tank. They're still checking it to try to figure out what happened. Let's show you the pictures of what we saw when we first arrived. There was fire in between two buildings where some offices are housed. Uh, there is damage to both of the buildings. One of the businessmen that we have talked to in the past, and I'm still with Senator Simon, Oklahoma, on, said that uh, small sculptures he has inside are completely scorched and damaged. Firefighters are still working to take some of the hot spots out of here and make sure that the fire doesn't continue. They consider themselves very lucky it did not jump a road and go on into a mobile home park that's just a few feet from us. So, once again, the fire is under control. Everyone here, with the exception of two businesses, seems to be all right, and those businesses will be able to carry on. I'm Terry Watkins reporting live from South Oklahoma City. Thank you, Terry. Two people are hospitalized with second and third degree burns following an early morning house fire in northwest Oklahoma City. The fire destroyed this house in the 700 block of Northwest 89th. Bernadette Kincaid and her boyfriend Lester Love were badly burned. Kincaid's 10-year-old son escaped through his bedroom window unharmed. Kincaid was unconscious when she was pulled from the house. When they got out and took her back there and they gave her some like CPR, they, they gave her like two or three times. The first two times she wasn't breathing, but the third time when they did it, she started breathing on her own. Bernadette Kincaid suffers from burns on 34% of her body. Lester Love has burns over 56% of his body. Investigators still don't know what caused the blaze. Arson has been ruled out. Fire officials say David Kincaid's quick reactions helped save his mother's life. Five Alive's Anthony Foster has more from his reporter's notebook. Anthony? Well, Ben, fire officials say David Kincaid's actions are a textbook example of a kid who had an escape plan for a house fire. Uh, from his open uh, bedroom door, he could see a reflection of the fire from a mirror in another room of the house. He quickly went the other direction, climbed out of his window, went across the street to a neighbor's house for the neighbor's house uh, for help. And fire officials say if his mother had been unconscious for much longer, it's a good possibility she would not have survived. Now the Kincaids did not have a smoke alarm, and fire officials say if they had one, there's a strong possibility all three would have escaped this fire unharmed. Ben, thank you, Anthony. It's the season for giving, and one Oklahoma City family could really use some generosity. The Berry Hills saw their home go up in smoke as they planned for a Thanksgiving dinner. The Berry Hills were very thankful that no one was hurt, but they still need some help. The Red Cross is helping to replace some of the Berry Hills clothing. If you'd like to donate, Mosella is 23 years old and wears a size 12. Her daughter Ashley is five months old, and son Albert is seven years old. You can contact the Berry Hills at 948 6043. That number again. 9486043. The return of a former Czechoslovakian leader tops dateline. Albert Dubsik made a triumphant return to Prague today. He called on 250,000 cheering demonstrators to unite to improve the country. Dubsik was the leader of the 1968 reform movement in Prague. Changes in the East will be the subject of a meeting between President Bush and Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. The president rolled out the red carpet for Mrs. Thatcher today at Camp David. Britain's leader was greeted by the president and first lady and one of their daughters. In Los Angeles, singer Paul McCartney kicked off his first U.S. tour in 13 years. The one-time Beatle thrilled the crowd with old favorites from his days with the Fab Four. Included, too, were songs from his new album, Flowers in the Dirt. Two years ago, an Oklahoma City woman wanted her son to be away from violence, gangs, and drugs. So she made him join the Air Force. Well, thanks to American Airlines, her son is home for the holidays. Five Alive South Oklahoma City Bureau Chief Bill Mitchell reports. Oh, there's no place like home for the holidays. I didn't come over here. Welcome home, Rodney Gaines. He's been in the Air Force for almost a year and a half. In that short time, Pamela Collins says her son became a man. Yeah, you 
Rodney Gaines grew up in this Oklahoma City neighborhood, where the streets are sometimes paved with gangs, violence, and drugs. For many here, that road is a dead end. Lives here can stop before they've had a chance to begin. Pam Collins didn't want her son to go down that road. These Oklahoma streets, is nothing for him out here. It's just nothing for him. When I was out there and I was here, I just couldn't see anything but just going out, partying, and it's really, it's, it's got to end because there's no future in there. He said he's gained a couple of pounds. Gaines believes he has a future now in the Air Force. He gives him a chance to work an honest job, get an education, and begin a career. Pamela Collins is thankful her son is home for the holidays and that he is marching to the beat of a military drummer. Rodney is, says Pamela Collins, now walking on a road which leads to a better life. In South Oklahoma City, Bill Mitchell reporting. Thank you, Bill. Great story. Shopping malls are the place to be today as retailers face the busiest day of the year. Shoppers are out in full force. Today, they are hurrying around trying to find that perfect gift. One shopper says she usually doesn't start Christmas shopping this early. This is new for me. I don't usually do this after Thanksgiving. I'm usually too poop, but yeah, I figured I'd come out and check it out and see what's up, see what I can buy. This is a sure sign that Christmas is just around the corner. Well, the streets of downtown Oklahoma City will light up this evening with the annual Festival of Lights at Kerr Park. Five Alive's Jane Giroux, Jerry Adams, Susan Poole, Brother Butch, and I will be on hand for the lighting of the Christmas tree. The parade starts at 6.15 at E.K. Gaylord and Sheridan. The parade goes up Broadway to Robert S. Kerr, the south to the Myriad Gardens. And while you're at the parade, you can donate to Toyland. Just take your toys to the Five Alive float. Well, Brother Butch says take your coat to the parade this evening. He's next with that forecast. And Californians are boxing up toys to help kids in Oklahoma. And the Dallas Cowboys head coach is upset about last night's game. Story ahead in sports. Well, Toyland is getting help from as far away as California this year. Discovery Toys in Martinez, California has donated 500 toys to help needy children in Oklahoma. Earlier this week, the toys were boxed for shipping. They were then loaded on a truck headed for the Sooner State. The toys will arrive next week and be distributed during the mayor's Christmas party. Chevy dealers around the state want to help children this Christmas through our Toyland Drive. In Woodward, you can donate to Toyland at Irwin Auto Company. If you live in the Cushing area, our Toyland donation site is Leonard Chevrolet. And in Chandler, the donation site is Earl Hart Chevrolet. And remember, all toys donated in your community will stay in your community to help children there have a very Merry Christmas. This Saturday, Five Alive's Dean Blevins and Cherokee Ballard will be in Shawnee for a Toyland kickoff party. The party starts at 11 at Harvey's Incorporated in Shawnee. Come by with toys to help everyone have a great Christmas. And as we told you earlier, we'll be at the parade tonight in downtown Oklahoma City. We invite you to bring a toy and you can donate it to Toyland. We'll just pick it up at our float. Probably feel a little bit on the chilly side because these winds will continue. They'll diminish somewhat as the sun goes down. But uh, we we'll want to mention that the fire danger is very high. Uh, the top of the news, we had several fire stories, uh, dry conditions around with the lack of rain we've had and the gusty winds. Uh, watch your burning outside, and I suggest not even do it today. Right now in Oklahoma City, we're under a mostly sunny sky. Our current temperature is 55. Humidity this afternoon is 35%, so that's kind of low. The pressure is 29.83 and falling. Winds are out of the south. They're blowing to beat the band at 32 miles per hour. You know, I've seen some gust up to 40 and no rain overnight. Here's a look at what happened overnight. Not much, really, just a few thin clouds moving through. We're generally seeing a mostly clear sky this afternoon with a few thin clouds out in the west. There's a pretty big storm system that we'll continue to monitor up in the Pacific Northwest that we'll show you here in just a second. 50s and some 40s around. We're starting the afternoon uh, with a range of temperatures from 48 degrees at McAllister to about 58 and from Altus 52 here in the capital city. Winds on the average now are out of the south, 15 to 25 miles per hour with some higher gusts, of course. Favorite little town of mine up here is Arnett, named after A.S. Arnett, a minister uh, from Fayetteville, West Virginia. Uh, Arnett, by the way, is the county seat of Ellis County, 51 degrees up there. Afternoon highs today will be a little warmer than what we normally have for this time of year. Afternoon highs will get up into the 60s. Liable to see a few 70s down here in the southwest, while the chilly time temperatures will be around the Ohio River Valley, the New England states, and the Big Lakes, also in the northern Rockies. 
Uh, fortunately, we don't have anything, uh, any messy weather to contend with, uh, like they have up here in the Northern Plains with a mixture of rain and snow up there. And also, a little bit of snow will fly from Detroit to Buffalo later on today. Here's the big storm system we're talking about. It's uh, pretty big, as a matter of fact, not necessarily that potent, but it uh, covers a wide area, so they're anticipating more rain and snow up in the Pacific Northwest by later on today. Other uh, lighter snow will fall around the UP of Michigan, northern Wisconsin, and Minnesota. As we put our map into motion, this dome of high pressure will scoot off to the east, and with a trough of low pressure, that uh, means southerly winds will continue most of the afternoon and not be so high tomorrow as a system begins to move down into Oklahoma. This behind the system is Pacific air, so we'll cool down just a little bit toward the latter half of the weekend, and the beginning of next week will be on the cool side, but really no cold blast and no rain anticipated. Here's a look at our forecast today. Mostly sunny, windy, and warmer with a high today of 67. South winds 20 to 30, but some gust up to 40. For tonight, fair and cool with a morning low of 42 with south winds of 10 to 15. And tomorrow, mostly sunny and breezy with a high of 70. South, then northwesterly winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So quite a bit of sunshine in this five-day forecast, but as you'll notice, we'll cool down toward the end of the weekend with afternoon highs in the 50s but for the beginning of next week. And then our morning low temperatures will be mainly above freezing with 30s and 40s around. We certainly need the rain. The fire uh, hazards are getting out of hand. Of course, the wheat farmers are complaining, too, that they need the rain, and they do so. Okay, thank you, Butch. Now let's take a look at noonday prices at the markets across the country. Well, the Southwest Conference champ will be decided tonight, and Jimmy Johnson exploded in anger. Myron Patton is next with sports. Through fellowship grants, the memory of the teacher who died in the Challenger explosion will never be forgotten. Jeff Mirasola tells us about a teacher in Fairview who makes good use of the Krista McAuliffe grant. The 8th graders at Chamberlain Middle School are learning how cartoons can help teach meteorology. The point, the point though, guys, whenever you're doing this, you're going to be gaining a lot of information yourself because you have to use higher order thinking skills. You're going to have to see what information you've learned about meteorology. You know, Teacher Gary Sackett received more than $29,000 to develop creative education ideas. Computer-generated cartoons for weather forecasting is one idea. Whether it's in science or history, uh, language arts, it, it makes no difference. Even music, we're trying to develop uh, educational materials that are multidisciplinary. A sizable amount of the fellowship has gone to add computer equipment to the Chamberlain Research Group. Here, students take information and articles from two other districts over phone modems and put together a monthly journal. The computers are also gathering information from teachers across the state on what kinds of systems they have in their schools. I'm actually going out and getting this information for them so that they don't have to spend as much time uh, outside of the classroom preparing, trying to figure out how to use the computer within the classroom. Eventually, any teacher that wants any information on computer applications in the classroom will have it at the touch of a button. Jeff Mirasola, 5 Alive News. Thank you, Jeff. In Project Challenge today, Five Alive is looking for a few good student anchors. And you can be part of our Student News Corps. Auditions will be held December 9th at Oklahoma City Community College. You must be in grades 6 through 11. We'll choose 14 students who will get a scholarship. For more information, contact your school in the metro area. Now, they're not saying anything about sports or weather anchors. Is, is that trying to tell us something? Well, just, I don't know. I mean, they're just going to do news on That's fine with me. I mean, you know, that's fine with me. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, he's upset. Yeah, he got real upset. Too. Well, that was actually better than the game if you... Uh, yep. I got some really good comments from him here coming up. The Dallas Cowboys lost to Philadelphia yesterday, 27-0, which is no shocker. But this game will be one to remember due to the Cowboys' claims that bounties were posted for key Dallas players. Quarterback Troy Aikman is one of the players. He's tagged here long after the whistle had blown. That started one of the many fights that occurred during the game. The price to injure Aikman supposedly $500. Now, kicker Luis Dejas, a former Eagle, he was knocked silly during the game as well. The alleged price on his head, $200. The Cowboys claim Eagles coach Buddy Ryan posted the bounties. I got a call Friday. 
from one of my friends, and then he said, you know, they're coming after you. So I didn't make much of it. And then the coach told me that's right before the game. He goes, they're going to come after you. And, uh, you know, we, there's nothing. You know how Buddy is. I've been in all the team meetings. And I'm the captain of this team, one of the captains. And I guarantee you, in my word, it didn't have any bounty on any player. Uh, oh, I would have said something to Buddy, but he wouldn't stand on the field long enough. He put his big fat rear end into the dressing room. All right, Dallas. The choice Barry Sanders made as much noise as the Eagles and Cowboys did, but he did his with no one claiming foul. The former OSU Cowboy went over the 1,000-yard mark in helping the Lions to a 13-10 win over Cleveland. He had 145 on the day to join former OU Sooners Billy Sims and Steve Owens as the only Lions to go over 1,000 yards. Now, later today, Arkansas and Texas A&M will meet in College Station with the winner a step closer to the Cotton Bowl. If an Arkansas wins, that means they would have to beat only SMU to gain the berth, while an A&M victory means the Aggies would have to beat Texas. Now, bowl bids officially go out tomorrow, but the tentative schedule has Colorado versus Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl, Alabama versus Miami in the Sugar Bowl. The Fiesta will have Nebraska, Florida State, while the Rose will match up USC with either Michigan, Illinois, or Ohio State. Now, I explained the Cotton Bowl scenario for Arkansas and A&M, but Texas and Texas Tech also have a chance to represent the Southwest Conference, but both are out if the Razorbacks win today. One of those four will meet either Illinois or Tennessee. Now, last night, uh, Major Harris of West Virginia led the uh, Mountaineers to a 24-17 win. Now, he became the first player in the collegiate ranks to rush for 2,000 yards in a career and to also pass the 5,000. Rico Tyler scored the winning TD for the Mountaineers. Bowl game's almost here. Okay, thank you, Myron. We'll be checking in with uh, Jane Braden and other Five Alivers in just a moment at Quail Springs Mall. Stay with us. Five Alive's second annual blood drive is underway at this time in Quail Springs Mall. So while you're out Christmas shopping, stop by and donate some blood because this is a critical time for the blood bank. It continues till 7 this evening. Well, the malls are extremely busy. Five Alive's health reporter Jane Braden is there with more on the blood drive as well as with some other Five Alivers. How's it going, Jane? We're having a great time out here, and everybody's out giving blood. But not only Five Alivers, we hope a lot of shoppers will be coming out, too, and roll up their sleeves. Now, Wayne Shattuck just gave. He says, Already hug did. me. I gave blood today. That's right. Oh, boy. Oh, this, is, this is worth doing it. Now, what do you hug? get for doing it? Well, we also get, look at this, Five Alive uh, Blood Drive T-shirts, and they got some great cookies up there. I came for the cookies myself. <laughs> but it's a good cause. This is a time of year when blood is really needed, and it doesn't take long, and it's not that painful at all. Come on and do it. Blood Drive here. And you survived. That, that, that's great. testimony enough. That's right. Jerry Park and Bill Mitchell will also collect the toys. That's right. That's right. And uh, we have a, a toy here, and we want to present this to Bill Mitchell Thank so you can Jerry. put it in the box. In the we don't, we don't have just a whole lot of toys. You know, one of the best things to do is come out here, buy a toy out here at one of the stores and bring it by. Absolutely, or you can go to any one of the other locations in the Oklahoma City area and out of the area now. And you bring it by the station or the Chevy dealers. Or the dealers. South Bureau. Every part of the <laughs> South Bureau. So we got a lot of fun. Are we ready to roll up our sleeves now, Jane? We're ready. If you're wandering the mall a little lost, here's how you find the oh, blood, yeah. uh, the blood bank. Yeah. There's some really funny boxes. He's talking about wrapping things. Uh, here are the funny boxes. And so uh, look for these guys, look for us, and give blood today. Thank you, uh, Jane Braden, and thank all the Five Alivers for joining us out there, helping us out at Quail Springs Mall. We invite you to go by and donate blood. Of course, big parade tonight. We'll be there with Jerry Adams and Jane Giroux and Susan Poole. And we'll be back right after these messages. Stay with us. Less than an hour ago, a Santa arrived in Oklahoma City. Our own Sky 5 helicopter brought Santa straight from the North Pole and let him off at North Park Mall. Children eagerly, eagerly, <laughs> eagerly awaited as Santa arrived, and Santa greeted them all. Hey, Santa's here. It's Christmas time. Yeah, just about anyway. Yep. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you have a wonderful weekend. Monday... Bob Wood and his band from Dell City will be joining us also next week. Singer, songwriter, Grammy Award winner Paul Overstreet, as well as the AT&T Glee Club. Bye-bye now.